traffic. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good to see you, Richard. Oh, good to be seen. Are we going to get Peter tonight? Uh, he's at his son's award banquet currently for uh, his participation in sports at school. So he'll he'll be along at some point. Oh, good for him. Yeah. He said he would do his best. But we have a quorum now, so. Am I sitting here? I'm sitting here. Good. You can do either or. You can switch nameplates and sit next to me if you'd like. Uh, well, where will Peter sit? Over there. Okay. Now that you were saying that, I did remember that's why we have the public hearings starting at 8 o'clock and later this right. evening. Okay. Um, bills and payroll are there for your signature. Yeah. Trying to get out of Boston was unbelievable tonight. All right. Okay. Opening the agenda, first item, board business, bills and payroll, uh, minutes. While we're doing the bills and payroll. Richard, did you have a time chance to go over the minutes? I did. And they look good. Okay. As always. Mark. Perfect. As always. On the same motion. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. And I'll second that motion. Did I say a motion or you motion? said e motion. E -motion. That's okay. We knew what you meant. Yeah. All those. Davis All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. Small little notepads nowadays. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Now. Yeah. Can't afford big ones. I figure you'd like that. Budget cuts, you know. Is that what it is? There's two in that one and one in here. Okay. All right. Talk to Gary. Public input. So tonight, who do we have before us that would like to speak? Hi. Uh, Gary McCrory, um, 15 Mill Road, Wilton, Massachusetts. Gary, I'm with the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Hi, Rich. How are yes. you? Yeah. Um, I asked to be put in the agenda to discuss an item that is in the master plan. <clears throat> I have some slides um, that I can go over. Um, specifically, yeah, there's one item specific in the master plan implementation program that deals with um, uh, that I want to specifically discuss with you tonight and get feedback from the planning board as to the approach I'm, 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 an approach I'm I propose to get it off the ground. Um, so the next slide. Um, I kind of want to build the case though first and okay. get some background. So um, in terms of my goals, um, the goals one of the, the transportation is one of the key elements in the master plan. Um, Recap here a little bit of transportation 101. You know, it's not just cars and roads. It's moving people in from one place to the other, one way or the other, however that's done. And we have a lot of transportation needs, um, and it's more than just roads and highways and traffic. Um, one of the overarching goals with the master plan was to improve getting around, however that may be. And um, with a, with a lot of people brought up, you know, more, more bike paths, more walking trails, um, and also services and public transportation as part of the transportation package. Um, that goal, that overarching goal of that's in the, that's in the third bullet. We got a lot of out of our outreach sessions. Outreach session number two, where we had specific <coughs> rooms that we discussed, like at a breakout session for transportation and and public um, housing and and um, economic development. Um, the idea of increased bicycle pedestrian improvements was a key element that came out of some of those discussions. Um, and, if, and that was reflected in the goal that we just have there. Next slide, please. So there were nine transportation-related specific goals in the master plan, goals and recommendations for the master plan. These is a, I won't read them all. Um, but what's interesting to note is that I put an asterisk next to the ones that I would consider outside the normal purview out of, of the highway department. Because um, I think the highway department is kind of the default entity in this town that deals with 
transportation issues, logically. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to point out some of those ones that are outside that purview, you know, uh, improving transportation options for Littleton seniors, um, comprehensive network of trails, improved transportation connections between businesses and MBTA station. Next slide. Um, a funding source for biking improvements and walk walking and cycling improvements and some sustainable, healthy, sustainable policies connecting transportation and schools. Um, so I, I'm bringing these up because, like I said, it's not, some of the other goals you could say highway department would probably be the lead for to talk with DOT regarding traffic levels or complete streets. Mm -hmm. That would be a clear, uh, the rose is pinned on them probably to implement those kind of things. But these other ones, they kind of just out there and there's no real champion for it. Next slide. So what I did is I went through and kind of kind of quantified just how much how many issues we have that deal with transportation. And these are all the ones that were from the 67 items that are in the implementation program for the master plan. And I think there were 17 items. So 25% of the items in the master plan implementation program deal with transportation. Um, they touch on all of the all of the seven out of the eight themes that the master plan has. Gary, since we can't read this, where where can people find this? That's in the implementation program in the master in plan. In the master plan, okay. Um, and, and tonight in your meeting packets, there's a fold out sheet that has the blow up of that center portion of that slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Didn't mean to interrupt, but that's okay. And did you provide them with the mm -hmm. charter too? Okay, good. Yeah. So um, yeah, this nothing is this is nothing new information. This is just an extract of the implementation program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give you a sense of, you can, it's probably not a point to look at it because it's just, if you want to reference it, that's, that's the excerpt from the plan. But some key points out of it, next slide, is that 25% of the items in, this, in the implementation program deal with transportation. Um, it touches on seven out of the eight themes, like the in Common, like um, planning growth, community health and well-being, legacy, active government, so it's, it's broad in terms of its scope of what it covers. All of them are considered high and medium priorities and all, all require the input of multiple departments and committees. Um, transportation or improving transportation connectivity was one of the three items that the, uh, when we did a um, letter at the, that, that went with our master plan and the update steering committee, we identified three key things that we thought were key things for, the, for us to focus on, mm -hmm. and the common was one of them. Improving intermodal transportation was one of those three. It's also one of the initial seven that we, in the Mass Point Implementation Committee, have as key items. So, next slide. Point being, it's important. It's important and it touches a lot of elements of, what, of the quality of life in the town, and it's more than just moving cars around, um, <coughs> and that I think uh, funding for transportation services needs to be in the mix and it's uh, besides just imp improving infrastructure and there's no one entity that has the ball when it comes to some of these transportation right. issues um, and that's kind of probably the key point I'm trying to make today and as a result of that um, next slide one of the items in the master plan implementation committee's recommendation the implementation program was number 44 with its exact, excerpted exactly out of here, which was to create a transportation advisory team to coordinate on transportation issues across departments and across modes of transportation. In absence of having a transportation czar, which I don't see us investing in or having someone have that, and our town's not that big enough to have maybe a, a full, we have a DPW chief, but we don't have. I was just going to ordain you the czar. So. Sorry? I was just going to make you the czar. So. That could be a possibility, but in absence of doing something like that, um, the thought that came out of the master plan, and I'm trying to talk to you here tonight about, is using the existing organizations that we have in town and creating a, I'll call it an advisory team or advisory council okay. to discuss transportation issues, prioritize transportation issues um, amongst the different entities so that those with different perspectives have a seat at the table. Okay. Um, included in your packet is a... Um, because when you have something that's something new and different and not something that we normally do before, it's kind of hard to um, 
figure out how, where to start. So what I did is drafted a, um, uh, I'll call it a charter or, or whatever you want to call it, but a, a proposal that um, describes how I would see this Transportation Advisory Council working and what would be, inc who'd be included in it. Um, so you're welcome to read it and, and uh, get back to me later, or we can talk about it tonight. But um, what I envision is that this council would meet regularly. Uh, how often? Something that we could determine. But, you know, I'm thinking maybe quarterly, maybe three times a year. Uh, I think a key time to meet would be before the budget cycles and the goals for the different committees meet. And so that when... Uh, um, so when the town is appropriating their funds and coming up with their spending plans for the year, they kind of can see, you know, what items would be um, would be would resonate amongst the different entities. Um, I'm envisioning participation from the highway department, obviously, planning board, um, elder and human services or council on aging, the, the bicycle pedestrian advisory committee, um, probably the police department because they're on public safety. Maybe the sustainability committee, <coughs> maybe someone from either the selectman's office or town administrator to represent their entity, their interest. Um, and I'm, I, my initial thought when I was proposing this, and I've discussed it with a few committees, was I'm not trying to create some new bo body. I'm just trying to create a place where the existing bodies could talk mm -hmm. and just share opinions on it. And who chairs this and, and how it works and its charter. I think it's all open to discussion. Um, if I could make a recommendation, is that I would I would fine tune it now and present it with some real legs instead of leaving it as an open discussion because you come in it, it stays an open discussion. Okay. So I would establish it as a, an advisory group. My mm -hmm. recommendation would be though to to put some teeth in it with saying, hey, you know, there's going to be uh, someone is going to chair it, and you know we can rotate the chair. Or, but I definitely think it's a good idea. So. Okay. Um, so what I have out there is, a, is something as a proposal. I mean, I've talked so far. I've talked it over with uh, the Master Plan Implementation Committee, which they endorsed. I've talked it over with Chris and Jim Clyde at the Highway Department, um, the BPAC, and the Sustainability Committee. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, sustainability may not be a natural, obvious fit, but I'm from the Sustainability Committee, and I can do my first people that I try to talk to and just kind of see how they what they thought about uh -huh. it. Um, so the other entities I think I want to talk to, I definitely want to talk to Council on Aging, Elder Services, because I think that's a big, we heard that a lot, that uh, more services, more the shuttle service that they have right now is, is um, it's very heavily utilized and doesn't offer enough options and yeah. expanding that. So I think that should be in the mix because I think we tend to focus on infrastructure when we talk about money and not talk about services. And so throwing services into the mix I think would be worth talking about. Um, so when I talked with some of the different offices, um, uh, the option of including at-large representation beyond the existing committees was discussed. I think it's something that could, it's worth considering sure. um, to see if there's anybody who's outside of those offices or maybe having, looking for a demographically a mix, someone from the, maybe someone in the high school age or something like that, or someone from, you know, some other yeah, young adults. Mm -hmm as well as um, any, you know, anybody, basically. Some at large, but it would be nice to have a mix of demographics in there. Um, that's open to consideration. Uh, I think, though, I think it's important not to, inc not to make it too large, because I think when it gets too large, it gets a little unwieldy. That's just my own personal opinion from my own work experience. Sure. Um, so, um, let's see. So, my f so I think that the first step um, is getting something established, um, putting a draft charter together, and um, and coming up with some rules of engagement, basically. And I also think I mean, I'm, I'm talking about something regularly to meet mm -hmm. for over the year, but I also think it's something that could be easily convened if, say, there's a transportation issue that comes up that doesn't fall into a normal cycle, that you you have a proposal for some development, or some new issue with the MBTA station comes up that these parties can meet as well and get, some, get come to some kind of discussions on those things as well. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, because I, my, my feeling is if no one, I'm bringing it up because 
Because no one owns the ball in transportation, I'm not sure when this issue or item would come up otherwise right. if it wasn't no. coming out of the Master Plan Committee. So um, I'm open to some comments or questions. Right, well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to do this. And uh, I think it's a great idea to suggest that we create a, a board or advisory group to take a look at the needs of the town for transportation for the seniors. Um, the bike paths, definitely, you know, we need, we need more of them for sure. Uh, although we have some complete streets happening already with some bike paths on it, it's a good start, and I'd like to see it continue. So I'm all for it. I think that the charter, um, who are you suggesting writes the charter? I'm asking you if you'd want to volunteer to do that. I don't know what goes into writing a charter. Google um, it. What? Google it. Um, so this is my first. I just took a cut at it. I mm -hmm. took a cut at something here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd be willing to give a give a give a crack at it. Okay. Um, but if I had some guidance as to what goes in it, something like either some other charters that are out there now in town or something like that. Sure. I'm sure that Mark could dig up a charter or two that's been written in the past. And, sure. Um, I think it's a great idea, especially like, just like you said. But we've been talking about senior housing. You know, years ago we got a ban. That was an early start. It's we're way past the ban situation now. We need a lot more than just a ban. Um, yeah, the roads are nice, the pathways, the bike paths, but it's it's more about getting people around this town. And as we get more and more older citizens in here, it's getting harder and harder for the seniors to get around this town. So we really need to start addressing it. And we, as the planning board, <coughs> excuse me, addressed it where we. We've decided to, um, as developers come in and ask for waivers and things like that, we're going to take the extra money that we're going to try to derive from the waivers and put it into a transportation fund. So okay. years ago we had a sidewalk fund, which is how we started funding sidewalks, and we ran out. We used all the money up there. Now we're trying to get some extra money, however we, whoever we can coerce out of it for transportation. So we... I think we're both on the same page. We're all on the same page. Yeah, well, that's good. That's one of the items in the dining list was, yeah. was provide a funding source for some of these things. Yeah. So good. So if we can start getting outside funding for that, that would at least get us started. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on um, um, participation or size? Um, I, I liked your idea when you were saying a member from, from select board, planning board, um, citizen at large, I think is a great idea. Okay. Um, especially somebody that might have some road engineering background or design background or maintenance background or, you know, for a, a fleet bus driver, honestly, just to get their input on what it takes to, to navigate a town like this, you know. Um, Should have Anthony do it since he didn't show up tonight. Good God, that guy does it enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And, uh, and that way Trails Committee could provide input some of the time. Right, yeah, uh, bikes and trails and, yeah. you know, all those. Okay. I think it's a good start, and again, in the charter, you can list the members that you would think should be there, and, you know, once we take a look at it, we'll make our recommendations from the charter on what else we think should go there or if anything should be eliminated, um, but... Obviously, Finance Committee needs to be in Richard? There. Yes, I got a couple of points here. Gary, great to see you again. Hi, Richard. Um, we served on the Master Plan Committee together. The um, uh, bike paths, I'll start there. We, we need to make a... Uh, connection between the town center and the, and the train station. I spoke to uh, the developer that's going to develop the Nordblom property last night. And he's very interested in working with us at creating a bike path from the train station across his property mm -hmm. along the 495 corridor. I spoke with um, uh, the, the guys that bought the uh, Parley Lumber piece, and they're very interested in creating a bike path along the 495 corridor there. Um, all we need now is for somebody to talk to Life Care. And if Life Care is willing to uh, allow a uh, right of way, a bike path uh, along the 495 corridor there, and we got connectivity all the way to um, uh, King Street, which is great, because mm -hmm. that then you're just a short jump from there to Russell Street or to or up King Street. So it gets us closer to the town center. Yeah, um, to twist the arm of some other landowners along 495 that provide us a corridor. Well, that that gets that gets you too, and um, and I live in Tadawa. <laughs> yeah. I said uh, landowner, not homeowner. So, so I, uh, yeah. So, uh, our hope is that we can have that bike path go 
all the way to White Street, and then up White Street to the Common, because okay. uh, the town owns owns um, owns the whole section by the the track, mm -hmm. um, including that little field that takes you right into White Street, and there's a right of way to get you to White Street. Yep. So it's it's just a few other pieces of <coughs> property. Mark, you know, do you know anybody that owns property along the 495 corridor? I can't off the top of my head think of anybody. Okay. Well, we if we well that's great if news we come because, up with because because I think uh, you know I think we've seen it with the sidewalks and we've seen it with um, other bike trails as well. There's so a lot of towns around us that have these bike trails, yeah. but there isn't a lot of it's not really a network that we can get to and and uh, one I live not too far off 110 and uh, that road is very bad. To, yeah. to try to ride a bike on when that kind of cuts right through the town so if you have to find some you have to find some other way to get around to drive safely yeah on bikes there's um and and to can you continue on with that concept there's a uh, there used to be an old railroad um uh right away that went from route uh 27 in acton uh straight straight up parallel to 2a all the way to 495. um it was the uh acton nashua railway and the uh the right of way is still there, and if we could activate that and uh, and get a right of way across uh, the Fletcher's ski area, Mike Kimball's, um, the uh, and and the few pieces of property in between, then uh, we could actually connect our town center with a bike path to the uh, Freeman Trail, mm -hmm. which would then open up the bike path to you know to almost Boston in one direction and, and uh, Nashua in the other direction. Great. Uh, I spoke with a, uh, one of the chair people from the bike, is, bike committee mm -hmm. um, who's very, into, who, you know, somebody has to pick up the ball and run with that. Um, I don't, it's not me. Um, I have bikes, but I just don't have the time. Um, now around town, other than, than stopping the traffic, uh, somehow or other we need to create more uh, space so that we we have room for bikes, room for people. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to, you know, the traffic goes through there really fast. We want to try to slow the traffic down so that people aren't afraid to walk on the sidewalks or walk or bike on the side of the street. So um, that has to be looked at and studied and maybe a pathway made. I saw the state has, cre has begun creating a bike path. Um, the bridge is going to be widened at some point in time. Somebody needs to follow through on that. Which I think bridge? that's on the, the bridge that crosses uh, 119, crosses 495. Okay. That, that's going to be widened. Uh, it wasn't when the, when the state was doing their work, uh, but they did commit to widening it. That's why the road was set up the way it was. Somebody needs to follow through on that and see if we can push the state so to do that. When we get the advisory committee together, we'll have somebody appointed to all these ideas that you have. Um, do you have any ideas on the advisory committee, though? Do you, yeah. Would you be an interested party as a planning board member? Oh, I don't have the time. Yeah, I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Um, so all these, but all these items would be taken up by the, in your opinion, would be taken yeah. up by the advisory. Do you mind if I finish my list? I'm almost there. Sure, go right ahead, Richard. Thank you. Um, the uh, uh, let's see, older citizens and um, and. Um, uh, you know, a bus for older citizens. Um, we have, I think we have, we have two buses now. I'm not sure if we have, and they're both running pretty straight. Um, those are for, you know, those are for people like our parents. But when we become 70, I don't see much of us needing buses. I know I'm going to be driving until I drop, and uh, you know, I think that uh, I won't have a problem. Uh, and I know that you know most of our generation won't have a problem getting around, so buses will be uh, less less needed. I know with these developments, these housing developments that we're we're hopefully going to be providing uh, with you know affordable units and are 55 and older. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that we're going to really need uh, buses to get to those places. I think people are going to be driving to them. So so my point is that they don't need to be located in strategically uh, accessible areas. I think they can they can be where they'll the, the land allows them to be. We don't have much land, um, and what we have will be limited uh, by perkability and will be limited, uh, you know, by by size. 
So oh, on, that, on that item, I was surprised too when when I went to the outreach sessions on when it, when it came to it came to that, that that being a need. I, obviously, I don't ha I'm not in that demographic. I don't have the need for it. Uh, yeah. Nor do I have my parents not aren't living around here. But um, I was surprised how many people how many people said that that was an issue. <clears throat> Um, at the second outreach session that we had, they had your chance to vote as to what, how you, whether you agreed or disagreed or, or weren't ambivalent or whatever. When the item of investing in transportation options for Littleton seniors was, there's 100 respondents, 85 said they agreed or somewhat agreed. Really? Yeah. With the need for that as a requirement. Yeah, and I in think Council, Council on Aging, Aging same thing. right? Council on Aging has some. Um, um, detailed data on the use of the vans and the the shortcomings of right the, of the shortcomings program. right of the program because they get calls for um, rides that they can't meet they can't uh, fulfill those ride requests we have COA members that are going out and giving rides in their personal vehicles to people just to help them get to doctor's appointments right so. and and that needs growing as the silver tsunami right. you know, comes through it comes rolling in yeah so yeah, and if and if we don't have, I mean, it's all kind of connected. If you had some people, you know, who are, who are older, don't get around very much well at all, right? And then they they can't aren't driving or they shouldn't be driving, like my parents, and um, and so they really need something to get around if they want to stay in town. Yeah, um, and since. <clears throat> um, it is possible, like, you may be right in some respects, that some of the senior citizen center type place will might offer that as an amenity to offer rides and shuttles and things like that. Now, you, you pay for that. Um, and I know other people who are older maybe don't want to drive but would like to be able to get around without having to drive because it's intimidating to drive and it's a little scary. But if you, can, if you had a better network of trails mm -hmm. and you could feel safer walking on the streets and walking on sidewalks, then they, maybe they would walk to some of these places or walk to where there right. was a shuttle service. Yeah, if we slow the traffic. I also yeah. think, I don't see why it has to be limited to, personally, my opinion, I don't know why it has to be limited to seniors. It, I mean, we also have industry that would like to be able to connect to the train stations. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so why there couldn't be something that was, so just that was jointly. Yeah. In, our, in our last uh, meeting with Workers' Credit Union, uh, we discussed transportation being provided by them or purchasing a van so that people coming off of the commuter rail could be transported to IBM, to the workers' campus, and or to the point. So we're looking at that as well. So that's something we've already taken a look at. Um, but all these items that we're talking about are things that should be discussed with the advisory committee. Um, I think ultimately it comes back to the planning board for approval on a lot of these items. Um, but I think we should, should start the conversation with how we get the transportation advisory committee assembled. Mm -hmm. well, before we discuss the issues the, the that should be before, it. Yeah. well, we have to we have to develop the uh, the uh, what the needs are before well, we can develop uh, what what the demographics well, and everything else are. We've done that. It yeah. apparently we've done part of it. Yeah. Right, but the advisory committee could continue continue to do that. Could potentially, you know, uh, I'm thinking that they could at least establish a, a pecking order. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. that address. Some services, some BPAC type activities, mm -hmm. some transportation traffic issues, not all in one basket, which I think we tend to put more things in the basket of roads and bridges and maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah, I, tend to, I tend to see in this town. Money is so limited. Right. Yeah. So we'll have to resources. be creative on funding sources. And, and like Mark spoke to, that we'll, we'll be shaking some of the developers down to, to provide funds to the transportation fund, so. Asking for donations, I think, is a better way to put it. Shaking down is not a good word? Okay. I, was, I, I wasn't going to say that, remind you that we're on TV, but. <laughs> so process-wise, um, I can take a cut at dropping a charter. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, can you just walk me through what you think the process would be? Because I'm, this is all new to me, so. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to communicate you with you offline <laughs> okay. at some time and talk about how we should get this ball rolling. Okay. Um, now, would this be a selectman appointed committee or well, a planning board appointed committee? I think about it. We yeah. could, yeah, we could talk to the to the select board about whether they wanted to, to run it or if they'd want us to 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 do it. Yeah, I mean, it's planning and planning and transportation are, falls under our planning. Does. Yeah, planning does, but planning transportation is part of it. I think that the select board would provide the funding and we would find the planning. So I think that it could be either or. But I'd be happy to have that discussion with the select board. We probably should, yeah. So 
Um, we don't want to be in the, you know, for years we've been in separate silos. Now we want to we want to integrate mm -hmm. whatever we do with the selectmen so we Absolutely. communicate more. I couldn't agree more. Um, so yeah, but if you want to, you know, tomorrow I'll take a phone call or we can communicate by email and create a. Uh, I'm actually not. I'm actually. I'm actually off tomorrow, so I should be around if you want to give me a call. All right. Thank Great. Great job, Gary. Okay. Gary, appreciate you coming in. Thank Good you very much, Gary. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, words, Gary. I don't feel any older, do you? I'm younger every day. I'm on the Tom Brady plane. Any time. Why don't we? You know, how about golf golf cart bats too? They have them down in Florida, right? They have them in Florida. They actually have them up in New Hampshire too, in some in golf some yeah. yeah. Well, they have ATV paths in New Hampshire that you can actually ride on the road. That's and stuff. what we need. We're going to be yeah. the ATV and stuff. Golf, golf, yeah. golf cart uh, generation. Um, while we have so, item number three on the agenda tonight is continue public hearing for a definitive subdivision <laughs> property, and they requested a continuance till February first. Oh boy. Um, with that occurring. I think because we have the packets before us and some of the items that are in here tonight, the board business, we can review the um, applications and some of the paperwork that go along with the uh, senior housing uh, subdivision bylaw. Yeah. So I'd like us to take a look at it if we have a moment. What if we can we get done? Because I'm not here on May, on uh, Feb 1st. For yours is site, the site plan, right? Um, the K is a definitive subdivision, so that only needs three out of five. And I don't have any new special permit applications to open on the first, so. So um, good it, for the first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I could I could call in, but it would take a, a vote of the board to um, to allow that. The town that. hasn't adopted that. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's a <coughs> it's a perfect situation where it would work. No. So anyway, in your meeting packets, um, what, under board business, at the end of the first part of your packet, I think. Um, Judy was working on the senior residential development <coughs> bylaw um, and the inclusionary housing zoning bylaw, uh, application forms and procedures. And what she ended up doing was um, gathering all our procedures that are in various Places posted online into um, one set of board procedures. Right. Made a recommendation. I made a few notes on them and um, emailed her back a couple of suggestions on things that um, I do a different, little bit differently than than she's outlined there uh, by practice. Um, I think it would be a very helpful um, to adopt and uh, well hopefully adopt in, on February 1st, but to review and provide any comments on, on those. Um. Eddie, to the chair. I get Please. to comment. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Maren, this is, she did a great job. Yeah. As I was going through this, I'm saying, wow, wow, because they're all in one place now. Right, you, and you recognize all the materials from other locations. She yeah. was just able to gather them. Now, them one, one, one thing that I notice it's, it's missing is definitions. Mm -hmm. Is there a, do we, Keep definitions by uh, by chapter, or are they all located in chapter two? Um, definitions are all, all in the zoning bylaw, chapter one seventy three. All the definitions are in yeah. Yep. Yeah. in the zoning. So uh -huh. our definitions are there too. Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't have any any issue with this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good good piece of work. Uh, it, maybe we should. Since zoning bylaw is, is a separate chapter, what, maybe we should put a note in here that the definitions are there. This is a zoning bylaw. I'm I'm sorry. The um, maybe we should uh, I'll just re throw a note in with, to where you can find the definitions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is regulations can be be adopted by the board um, just after you adopt them. Um, we file them with town clerk and then post them online and it provides a lot of direction to potential applicants and mm -hmm. applicants that this is the way we, we do business and this is what's expected of you. Saves me some questions and and actually as training for board members or you know, new assistants or whatever mm -hmm. would, would be very helpful. Is there any reason we couldn't vote on this tonight? Um, it's up to you guys. 
I'm good with it. Well, it's only, we should probably at least let Peter get a look at it mm -hmm. and vote on it mm -hmm. on the first. I wouldn't want to approve it tonight. I have some, I have had an opportunity to look at it, but I'd like to spend some time with it before. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, when I emailed it to you, I asked for comments by um, January 24th or 5th, I think. Yeah. And yeah. that gives us me time to collate them and Judy time to make the updates. And on February 1st, Richard, I'll make note that you support the packet as presented. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing that um, Judy did that I <laughs> looks very helpful was she is, has prepared a draft application form for the senior residential development bylaw mm -hmm. and inclusionary housing bylaw, if I remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I hope I gave you both of those. Um, and in doing that, she reformatted um, the special permit application form and it makes right. a lot more <laughs> sense yep. you know before I kept adding another line every time there was a new bylaw or a new mm -hmm. special permit type and, uh, this one I, even though I was used to reading the old form this one makes a lot more sense yeah I'm I'm fine with the special permit application too mm -hmm. The, um, I like the key schedule as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's an all-inclusive application. It's great. And it's nice and, nice and simple. Simply simple to read. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that's what uh, Governor Baker's mandate this year is, is, is to try to eliminate any, um, complications and, and simplify as best we can. One of those I've probably looked at it so many times. That <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it <laughs> reads what I'm looking for. Read very well, very very good, plain English. It does, it does, and then to yeah. include the um, certifications by the applicants that the material they're submitting is yeah true and mm -hmm. got a nice checklist. Mm -hmm. Anything missing? Um, let's see the stormwater. Um, bylaw fee schedule fee was missing from the fee schedule and the way um, I had the applicants request the abutters list rather than my office requesting the abutters list I mean a few small tweaks like that yeah. and it was you know. yeah that just <coughs> that just passes the buck back into their it, mm -hmm. it's in their mm -hmm. purview anyways yeah, right as, yeah right saves you mm -hmm. some time well, as part of the application process. Yeah. It's You've got to give them the addresses, but they, they do all the green cards. They have to, yeah. Well, for, for the mailings. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the assessors do the certified abutters list and yeah. provide, provide the addresses. Great. Yeah. Well, you can note that, too. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, duly noted, sir. Anything else, uh, Mary? On the... Wow, this is great. We're making great, good headways. Headway. Killing time. Yeah. The esteemed attorney shared group on some chocolates if he likes Oh, oh I got, I'm going to pass. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Pass them back down. Yeah. 705. Anybody in the audience, I'm not going to throw them at you. But there are fruit and cookies in the back, too. Oh, yeah. What are we waiting for? Yeah, why don't I, why don't I just take it down and let them pass it around? Okay. Let me put it on the back table if nobody wants it. We got time. Okay, so anyway, um, you probably want to vote on reopening and continuing the, the K. Just so I have, officially have that. So we're gonna do it the first, right? Now do we Oh three. So we should be good for three. Yeah. Well we hope. Should at least do it. Yeah, Peter would be here. Peter will be here, yeah. And we don't know Jamie's team. planning on coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, Richard, I take a entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for the K property. Mm -hmm. 
Open. We'll take a motion to open and continue. To All right. To February first. So moved. Yeah. I'll second that. And we got a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. 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 Now we're till last time is till eight o'clock. If you want Chris to put up a recess notice, he could. <laughs> No, they can look at us and just say, well, what's going on? <laughs> well, if we get, if we get well, it. Why don't we have them all? We should talk about what we did last night as far as the, uh, the discussion. Yeah. We had the um, senior housing, what did we call it? Senior Residential Development Summit. Summit. It if we, summit. we had a big name like Summit. Yeah. Maybe we had a summit? Yes, wow. yes, we did. Um, and actually today I was looking back at the housing production plan and having a housing meeting with developers was one of the recommendations of that. So I guess that's been... Did you have a senior moment? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, it was a great meeting, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish Judy could have been here. I'm sorry she wasn't feeling well. Uh, but I thought we got the discussion going once we got through the PowerPoint and once the discussion started. You know, we really got a lot of good feedback from developers. Um, uh, we had the young the woman from... Rotten mm -hmm. came in and spoke from the Council on Aging and thought it was a great conversation that we were having. So, um, also got a lot of phone calls today from developers. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but interested it was, in it following was, up, are they? Yes, they were. They were interested in getting a better point of view. So, mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to have some good projects before us, and hopefully, we can manage them, control them. Eddie, did the calls come into uh, Marin? The, from the developers? The calls came in tomorrow and some called me directly. And, uh, they, uh, and I, they were informed that I was at work and I couldn't take their call. <laughs> <laughs> were they um, uh, developers that we haven't seen in town before? Uh, not today, not the ones that I heard from. Yeah. But you did get a couple of emails. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I heard, we had reached out to um, some of the regional developers as well. Um, National Development had hoped to come, um, but the, they didn't have anybody available. Um, Bonvi, um, Ron Bonvi Homes um, was very interested. Um, we also reached out to several um, uh, assisted living facilities in the area um, that do both uh, development and operation. And um, uh, Sunrise, um, right. in well, the closest one is Lemonster, but they have all throughout the region assisted living facilities. Um, several other names. I'm not going to remember right at the moment, um, but we're all very interested in the process and figuring out how they could partner with the town or, or with the developer um, for that uh, component. Mm -hmm. so I, I was concerned that some of the feedback from the meeting was that assisted living was overdone, but the, the, what we're hearing from, from the providers is that um, their need for services is growing mm -hmm. and, and would continue to grow for some quite some time. Hence the term. The, and I, I saw a Sil few people chuckle when you said it before. Say it again. Silver tsunami? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's we're all getting older. <laughs> Not wiser, just older. Yeah. Um, I'm on my way. Can you tell? <laughs> Every one of these meetings adds a lot more. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go poof onto the floor, I'll be happy. <laughs> that might happen. <laughs> um, but any, anyway, I was going to reach out. I'm sorry. I was going to reach out to a few of the developers that were interested developers and, and um, assisted living um, proponents that were interested but not available for the meeting and um, see if they could answer some of the questions that we had and just to mm -hmm. keep, keep the conversation going. Yeah, it was, it was a good, uh, hearty discussion. A lot of good feedback. A lot of interest, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Exciting times. Yeah, I like the pot about um, eight units on a single acre. That's we, we gathered that from the way you were speaking of it, Richard. Yeah, you really I mean, liked it. Well, it's it's so um, 
Because you believe that there's no it's, more land left in town to develop. There's, there's like so little density. Are you, oh, I didn't say that. There's very little land. Not with the inclusion of zoning bylaw. Well, even with that, there is because you got to you got to take into account all the per good perkable land is pretty much gone. Um, we have a lot of wetland in town, a lot of a lot of lich. I disagree with you. Mm. Yeah. There's still, there's still a fair amount of land in Littleton. There's, there's a lot of land left in Littleton, and I hope that we can protect a lot of it. I hope we can. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. I, I'm, I'm all for protecting where we can. Mm. Yeah. In the right places. Uh, but we, we definitely need to provide some, some housing for not just our seniors, but our kids too. Mm -hmm. We need affordable places. Perhaps our firefighters can't even live in town because there's no place affordable. You know, and, and you talk about the cost of houses. I think uh, Sherry could probably tell you if she's still she here. She left. She left, yeah. Uh, my wife's in real estate, and it's right now we're, we're uh, 400,000 is a uh, is hard to find a house in town for 400,000. So, and that's and to, not that to think how far we've come in the last probably 12 months in Littleton as far as planning goes and alternative housing development types available. Right. I mean, for years it's been single family residential, right. and we've gotten very good at producing you know $750,000 right. brand new homes. Um, it was very creative um, when Littleton started doing our open space bylaw and yep. clustering homes. Yeah. Um, Littleton kind of led the way on, on, on that in, in a lot of aspects. Um, now with the senior residential development bylaw, I've taken the next giant step forward mm -hmm. in, yeah. in, in allowing that and <laughs> giving us some time to work through the first few applications is going to be, right. be important. Yeah, we. it's just that big big hole that we haven't provided for in our zoning, which we just did. Well, and, but we've, right, and <laughs> we, we did the zoning piece of it, but as you know, most of your time is, is spent with, with the reviewing applications. Right. And, and it, again, yeah. it's, it speaks to the implementation of the bylaw and how we do it appropriately so that we don't flood the market at the same time. We want to make sure that we keep it competitive and, and affordable. So. And we don't want a hundred of them either. As soon as it's built, you want it to be successful. Right. 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 We don't want to have the. We, we don't want things that are built and fail, so we want to make sure that they're. We, we have to look. Each will have to stand on its own merits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Each on its own. That's all. Yeah. You know, we don't have to think that there's going to be a hundred of them, and we don't have to think that there's going to be none of them. But uh, I'm sure we'll get some. Oh yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we'll, worry I don't think we'll get as many as, as some people on the board think we are. Well, I, we will. I don't know. Uh, you got we want a silver tsunami, not a senior tsunami development. Well, you, <laughs> there you go. It's uh, it's amazing how many, um, how fast all those homes went down at, at the 40, 40B. What's that called? Green something or other? Wildflower meadow. No, down at the 40, 40B. Wildflower meadow. Wild, is that what it's called? Wild. 15 Green Road yeah. Wildflower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, any, any more public input? Have we heard anything yeah. from Peter? Anybody want to make any comments um, to last night's? Eight we're, we're, we're put on our thumbs for another five minutes, folks. So. Can I ask a question? Absolutely, you? please. When you're talking about just your name, that's oh, yeah, sorry, Carolyn Mueller, East Roxbury Drive. The, the campus that you keep talking about is that like Robinsbrook and Acton? Is that the kind of thing that we're thinking of? The, uh, I couldn't the, tell you what Robinsbrook and Acton uh, is. So, for those that I, I guess it is, then. all right, I'm just trying to like to picture it somehow, and I think it's something like that. Well, so when I was speaking of the campus in Again, because that piece of property that I have in my mind, you know, there was the piece, the Nordbloom piece by the train tracks. Um, the topography allows for some taller buildings because you have a bottom of a hill. So if you build small on the top of the hill and big at the bottom, it planes out, so you don't really affect the topography or the view. Um, so that was part of it. The other part I was thinking of was, in, in Mr. Shaw spoke to it, was phasing it so that we can make sure the first facet's successful before we move on to the next. But the offer that I thought was, was generous was that they would offer the um, property for the town to establish the assisted living 
facility. So we could bring in a partner that we were comfortable with and confident they could run it. Again, something that maybe maybe it is too dense. The ask might be too dense, and I think my board would agree with that. But it's a jumping off point. So somebody's got to ask for something so we can then negotiate what the town would be comfortable with. So, um, But I think that property lends itself to a lot of possibility. Um, Cricket Lane, what we've seen so far for jumping off, it's not bad. Um, and then we've seen a few others, so we're we're trying to encourage them to, to, to think outside the box as well as we're trying to think outside the box and understand that maybe eight units per acre isn't the worst thing in some places in town, but I just want to make sure it's the right place in town. Um, but maybe some single family mixed in with an eight you know unit townhouse or four unit townhouse is you know more appropriate for a site. So it's just we want them to bring it forward so then we can negotiate terms that benefit our seniors in our town. So I just didn't know if it was a special special type of developer that created that or if it was, you know, someone like these guys, but you just said, you know, bring it the assisted living would be somebody else that might bring that in because I would think that's a specialized thing. That's exactly. not something that right. Mr. Kennard would do. Yeah. No, and Mr. and Mr. Kennard or Mr. Shaw or Mr. Field, they all spoke to they don't have the ability to do it. Right. But there are developers out there that want the total package. They, they want to they want the independent, then the assisted, then the dementia care, yeah. and then the nursing care that goes with it as the final aspect of it. Right. So they want the they is. want you to grow into their facilities. Like Deaconess is one of those that does something like that. They have different levels of care, and that's kind of that's where the complex comes in, where you can go from one one wing, yeah. for lack of a better word, you go from one wing to the next wing to the next wing. So that you can stay there basically for as long as your care is taken care of. But I, but our zoning bylaw doesn't specifically um, describe that kind of facility. It doesn't, it does. but it's what we talked about last week. What we talked about. It does. It does. Some members talked about. Yeah, it's continuing care facility is is it's described in the bylaw, in the bylaw yeah. definitely. Yeah. And where but, but right the, now the campus. Concept. Well, the campus. If you took all four, yeah, the, the campus all four concept. things listed there. That's the continuing care, right? Right, right. That's how that works. That's the campus. I didn't pick that up when I read read it, but uh, uh, you I, could, you could. I think could that, yeah, I think each you guys are using own. a different like said, yeah. right? Each would stand on its own. Each could, uh, as I read that, I I would envision uh, each of those as a, as a separate um, entity. You could combine them all on one, one site. That's, I think that's how we really talked about doing it. And she showed us pictures when we did it right. of facilities like that. Yeah. yeah. And we saw the independent, I mean, the, uh, the standalone facilities too, where you just had the cottage complexes, mm -hmm. you had the townhouse complexes, you had the, uh, you know, independent living apartment garden style. <coughs> you, know, you could put it all on one campus or you could spread it out. It all depends. It all can be done. We don't want to fill up the town with assisted living, though. No, no, not at all. Because no. what will happen to assisted living when it's no longer needed? It'll be just like these empty office buildings we got That's now. That's kind of why you need the next step to go with it. You need to kind of have them all shadow one another. Because you have to go from assisted then to you go from independent to assisted then to life care. Right, and and I think if we remember what Judy told us during the discussions was um, sometimes the model that's um, assisted living and independent living, those shift a little bit. Um, some of them are set up first as independent living and with some services provided, mm -hmm. and as residents need more services, then the model shifts a little bit so right. that more services can Right, be. and I specifically remember Judy talking about a lot of times you, you have a, an, an elder couple living in independent and one of the two you know, might need more assistance later on, and they want to be in the same complex, but maybe they can't live together anymore so that they're, you know, or don't one can get up and go for a walk and go have coffee with their spouse who's now in assisted living as opposed to independent living. So they're still, that's part of the whole idea. Again, as one concept. It's not the end all be all. Yeah, and didn't she also talk about reuse of those buildings once the, uh, so we're not stuck with like empty office buildings that we have now. Well, well yeah, that was the yeah that they could right. be right. that you know when there's no, no more need for them they could 
be made into apartment complexes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we made it to 8 o'clock. But you have three board members. You need oh, four. Where is Peter? Oh. Where's Peter? And we need four for the 815 as well, don't we? Yep. But, so that's why. Will you call him and see where he's at? Mm -hmm. Do you know any contracts or anything? Can you tell us a story? I just want people to look up into here and see this level of stress I experience when things like this happen. By all means. Rob Houston, Median House Road. So I have a question that hasn't been really discussed in much detail, and that is, we you, you, last night you used the term amenities. But I'm not really sure that I understand what everybody's, because we have residential developers. Right? But when I think of amenities for these types of facilities, I think of you know, beauty salons or, in, in other words, I'm trying to figure out what amenities we're talking about. Is it a, we're not talking about people who can hike on a trail in a wheelchair mm -hmm. necessarily. So I'm just trying to, no, there wasn't a whole lot of discussion about the amenity aspect of these types of developments either. Right. So it's whatever they bring forth, but the amenities could be level walking paths that wheelchairs could travel on. The amenities could be as simple as rolling showers with grab bars to um, a nurse practitioner or, I mean, a, a, a licensed pra nurse come in and help bathe. You know, it could be any one of those items available. It's, it's all what the, the developer proposes. Um, so, no, but, I, I'll stop you there. That's not really an amenity. That's a design criteria. You're looking to build senior housing, so it should all, when you start building housing for older people, you have to have wider hallways, you have to have wider mm -hmm. doorways, you have to have grab bars anywhere, everywhere, yeah. anywhere. Anyway, that's not really an amenity, that's a design issue. Amenities are, and it depends on what yeah. concept you're looking at. If but, you're looking so at, I would stop you and say a design criteria could be an amenity. No, that's not really an amenity, that's a necessity. If you're building senior housing, you have to make the doorways wider because people might have to work. That's not an amenity. That's a necessity. You don't charge extra for it. It's when you design your unit, it has to be wider. You have to have toilets that are taller so that you can get on them and off them on a, on a wheelchair or whatever more accessible. Grab bars around the toilets. So Showers sure. that are, don't as, aren't as tall so you can get in them and you don't trip and kill yourself and grab by so that if you do trip, you still don't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Those aren't I'm amenities. Those are necessities. All right. The amenities come in depending on what process. If we're talking about Cricket Lane, you're not going to get any amenities. Well, that, that's kind of the point I was trying to bring up. But depending on the, who the, the developers that I heard last night were not necessarily <clears throat> developers that I would gather amenities flow from necessarily because they're residential builders. Exactly. So and I'm just yeah. trying to figure out in, a, in your campus concept, for example, mm -hmm. whether that concept would also include, I don't know, a beauty salon. Well, see, that's where. Well, so <laughs> I would say I'm that trying to would, understand yeah, it seems like amenity. as part of the concept, we would want things and facilities, out, not just living facilities, but facilities that are amenable to seniors' activities, for lack of a better word. You've got two different concepts here. You have, Cricket Lane is not really a complex. I it's a higher density, it's going to look the same as most neighborhoods in the area. It's going to have higher density, and it's going to be done that way so the affordability comes into factors so we're going to put let's not leave amenities out of that discussion because those seniors will I guess residents I, I will need some like transportation have you guys broaden the yeah. discussion points around the amenities that you guys are because i think the developers need to hear that right mm -hmm. that's all I, mm -hmm. I i just thought i'd bring it up while we're spending Killing time, time. Waiting waiting for no. somebody it's a good, it's a good point and a good question and i think <laughs> while we have the time we might as well discuss it right. i would say if you're getting into a complex you're going to have amenities that the residents will Use that complex. Don't some of the to. some of the ideas of the complex that were floated around or the campus um, were dry cleaner, small grocer, coffee shop, doctor's office, doctor's, doctor's office, office. Or, and, and it kind of is also what helps to target the uh, the senior 
component of right. it, right? I mean, right. you're, you're not putting in a pub necessarily. Might yeah. be. It depends on the seniors, but. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that you know, those kind of things. Yes. Yeah. All those things. So that campus. That's where proposal. this partnering kind of becomes important for at least our traditional developers in our right. neighborhood. Is right. They need to be thinking about who they can partner with to provide these things. And that, that was some of the encouragement we were making last night. Yeah. So. I agree. But for something like the, the first proposal of Cricket Lane, I don't I I wouldn't say we need to strike amenities because they might provide something that we're not thinking of. So I wouldn't want to say that they don't have to. They have to think of something that's important. Yeah. That, well I think that that's why I wanted to bring it up. I think it's an important aspect to this senior housing bylaw mm -hmm. is is a component of that. Uh, but just remember that sometimes too many amenities make it unaffordable. Well the amenities should a lot of those perhaps can stand on their own yep. from a commercial aspect too, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Dry cleaners or a doctor's office or whatever. Yep. No way to eat it. Good one. Do we know? Yeah. Got nothing back. Mm -hmm. Let's text Jane and see if she can run down. Yeah. It's only a kid. I mean, how many days off do you need for a kid? Didn't she have it a week ago? I don't know what day it was. That's why he's the wrong definition. This is not being correct. You're right. No, thank you for the correction. I don't mind being corrected. Are you going to talk me into one beer and the No, I'm not going to. I got a sore throat starting right now myself. So. <clears throat> I'm actually going to grab an orange one. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take it around. I'll take it. Hey, did Anthony said that the, the van got totaled? Did we ever, have we gotten the van replaced? One of the vans? You don't know. Yeah. Yeah,
The other question that I was left with was uh, the coming prepared with a photo But are we getting a monthly fee? No, because that's like privately. That's right. Yeah. 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 Better, you know, the alternative to that is usually not good. <laughs> How's Mary doing down in the city? She's having a ball. Good. I'm going to give you these now. She looks so scary. She just stood there and stared at me. The line you had for the you don't make more than that. Yeah, they said they're the only way over there is the site distance from the other side. It was so much. I mean, I'll just pay that much. Let's just play me. So she did say she'd come back. No, I just texted him. I got that. And Jeffrey's flights are like. Oh, hi, how are you? 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 Are you?
But I think when she's doing it on, I mean, there was she's doing it on the house, so she's living in this which house. It's going to be a long Peter, thank you very much. I appreciate you cutting out early to come here. How do you know I left early? I'm assuming you must have. You look so good. Is that your, are you getting your mug shot today? Folks, we now have a quorum. I want to thank Peter Scott for leaving his son's award ceremony to attend this meeting with us tonight. So kudos for, well, sorry you had to do it. How's that? <laughs> and thank you. I know I'm missed. How did he do? Just did well. Did well, good. Good team did right. well. So, 8 o'clock, continue public hearing, 225 Taylor Street. Gutierrez Company, modify master plan, major commercial of industrial use in aquifer district special permit. Ed, Ed Skeely is here to thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ed, Ed Schioli with the, representing the Guitarist Company. I'm um, here before you tonight uh, requesting an extension on a special permit uh, this board granted to us uh, two years ago, uh, requesting additional time to develop a project uh, for our site located off Taylor Street. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wasn't here two years ago when I, when I extended it, I, just before I got elected. Um, these are special permits that have been in place since 2004, I believe. Four, yeah, right. um, have been extended quite a few times um, by the board. It was extended by the Permit Extension Act in there, and now likely requires action by the board in order to keep the permits active. Uh, the um, permit process at that time um, was lengthy because it was um, interesting development, um, office, commercial space. Um, For what? Um, yeah, I was, I'm probably the only one that was here back in 2004 when the Gutierrez company came before us for, they want to build a a campus setting for an uh, office complex. <coughs> it was um, office um, R and D. Correct. Uses. And mm -hmm. the market's just not there right now. They they spent well over a hundred thousand dollars to permit this facility, mm -hmm. and uh, we granted them extensions for the past four <laughs> or five times that yes. they've asked for it. So mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't really see a different. Uh, how long would you look for the extension to be? I think it's the two-year. That's uh, the, the usual process. Yeah. 
I, I have no problem. I would say the last uh, extension, and I believe you even have some foundations in place, don't you? Uh, no, we don't. Not, not on that project. No. This is this the old Cisco site. No. no, this is off of Taylor Street. This is right at the end of Taylor the Street. Street, right at the end where the intersection is. The oh, yeah, T. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Peter, any comment? Uh, <coughs> I see no reason why it not to continue with it. It's, yeah. it's gone along the whole. Okay. Good for it. Yeah. Any comments from the public? Can you speak a little louder? Any comments from the public? Yeah. yeah I'd like to know uh, uh, name. Name and where you're from, please. Uh, Dennis Sweeney. Um, I temp I'm living right now in uh, Campton, New Hampshire. I know I'm not a, a, a Littleton resident, but I am a taxpayer here in the town. <clears throat> and uh, my question is, uh, there's a piece of property that is a, that's jogged in there that's a residential home with operating a, uh, I think it's a refrigeration company. Um, and since the uh, Gutierrez company is looking for a modification in their plan, I would ask the planning board to uh, maybe uh, give some consideration to that property uh, and make that property uh, the same uh, special uh, industrial slash commercial uh, use. Uh, because, and there's a couple of reasons why I would like to see that. Um, one is that uh, conformity of the neighborhood is always a good thing in planning. Um, the other thing it, uh, I'd like to bring to the attention of this board is um, that uh, this particular piece of property uh, could possibly raise the issue of spot zoning. And I don't know if the planning board has even considered that. But I'm thinking that uh, in, in, uh, in just good planning practice, that that property should be considered uh, and also uh, be given the same opportunity as this major uh, plan development. OK. We'll take it under advisement. Sure. I know that the Gutierrez Company isn't at looking for a modification. They're just looking for an extension. So. Oh, the, the, the process, extension. right? The process is called modification because of state law. But they're not uh, modifying. They're not the modifying plan. modifying the plan. Right. Extending the time right. frame to construct. But but even so, uh, continuity of the neighborhood, considering it's an isolated piece of property that's um, got this major development on all three sides of its property, I think would be a reasonable, um, uh, from a planning board's uh, mm -hmm. standpoint, an overall plan. Uh, to give that property uh, the same uh, considerations as the uh, overall project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, th this this special permit does not change the the zoning. Um, the owner of that property has the right to apply for similar special permits as, as the Gutierrez company did. Is this? Is and they this, have not, correct? That's correct. And th there are no intentions of doing so in the future that we can tell right now. Well, so I, if that person does come before the board and ask for it, then we. We may consider, consider their, mm -hmm. their, application. their application to the board. So otherwise, right. we don't need a... Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the end of that. Yeah, thank you. And I'd also like to uh, uh, mention that um, uh, uh, the, the application, when I came here last, I don't know if it was the last couple of weeks ago, uh, you didn't have a quorum, so you had to postpone the, the, uh, the planning board meeting. Um, but at that point in time, the application spoke to a modification of the plan uh, to include uh, commercial zone. It hasn't changed. It's, it this is the same. This is just a an just an extension. request for extension. Okay, I'm, excuse me. Then I must have misread the application. Okay, now. no worries. Any other comment? I'll entertain a motion to extend the uh, special permit for another two years. I'll so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Great. <coughs> All right. 815 Public Hearing Wireless Telecommunication Facility, 451 Newtown Road, Verizon Wireless Modification to the existing site. And this is a new public hearing. Oh, uh, I have to read it? Yes, you do. <coughs> Excuse me. Verizon owns the tower. I can read it. Yeah. 
The town of Littleton Plain Abode will hold a public hearing on Thursday, January 11, 2018 at 815 in room 103 at the 36, 37 Shattuck Street to consider the application to modify and renew a special permit and or other relief deemed necessary pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A and the code to the town of Littleton Zoning, zoning Wireless Communication Tower and Facilities Section 173-128 through 173-133. Currently, the location is 451 Newtown Road, map R3, parcel 2. Property owner is AT&T Communications, Inc. <coughs> Excuse me. Application is Cello Partnerships doing business as Verizon Wireless. The application is seeking to modify and renew a special permit under the Wireless Telecommunication Facility Bylaw to allow equipment upgrades at the existing Lattice Tower at 451 Newtown Road. Application and plans can be viewed at the planning board and town clerk during their business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposal should appear at the time and place designated. The town of Littleton does not discriminate, discriminate on the basis of disability. Further, the same translation of this hearing will be provided for the hearing impaired upon a request by the planning board office. I'm going to be quiet at the meeting. Mark Montanari Clark. There you go. You're up. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Victor Manugian from McLean Middleton Professional yeah. Association for Selco Partnership Doing Business as Verizon. And tonight I have with me um, Tim Yi from Structure Consulting Group. He's responsible for real estate site act for this site for Verizon. And next to him is uh, Samantha Arnold from Dewberry Engineers uh, who prepared the drawings in case there's questions. Um, the legal notice said it all. Um, what we're proposing is to remove two existing dish antennas that are at the base of this AT&T tower. We are a, a tenant of AT&T. Um, um, and um, the existing ice bridge for those and replace it with a um, equipment shelter and GPS antennas mounted to the equipment shelter. The equipment shelter is going to sit on a 10 by 20 concrete pad that will just be poured on, on, the, on the ground. And um, again, we're looking to renew the prior pr special permit to allow for this equipment upgrade to enhance the uh, performance and service to its customers um, in the area. Um, um, there was a question about the color and style of the shelter, and there's also a question about the existing, in your draw, there was a picture that um, uh, the, your planner sent me of um, flute or horn type antennas on the AT&T tower. Our um, drawings on C2 do not show those <coughs> because they have been removed. And Mr. Yee confirmed with AT&T that those uh, have been already removed. So those kind of ugly um, apparatus are off the tower. And I was unable to print uh, a picture of the shelter, but if I may pass this around um, to the board. Uh, it will not be gray. This is an existing um, shelter that's coming from another Verizon site. So it's, it's a sand, keystone exterior finish. So it's a sand, natural, keystone look. Um, uh, that, uh, that, in my opinion, is, is better than gray, but uh, if the board wants the gray, I'm sure they could spray that gray, but that's w what it looks like now, and that's what we'll be proposing um, to put at the site. Um, and since we're uh, modifying, uh, uh, renewing and modifying a prior special permit, we do comply, um, and I put that in my letter, with your sections uh, 173, 131, and 173-133 already. Um, um, that's my quick presentation. If there's any questions from the board, um, I can answer them or my team can assist me. I'm concerned that you finally got the big old horns off that were 1967 vintage. How did you? I, we were always told that structurally you couldn't take them down. Uh, those, don't, those don't belong to Verizon. They're, they belong to AT&T and they just gave me the good news and said that I just can't believe they got them there. We've always been told that they were structural and there's no way they could get them off. So in the last uh, <coughs> they probably rusted on them. the last <laughs> modification was made to that. We made a big uh, deal about pulling them off. I know, but they kept saying that they couldn't take them off. I'm just surprised they actually got them off. Yeah, they they definitely and that gone. property up for sale. I, I don't have that information. Yeah. yeah. 
That's uh, the one where it was down five floors. Yeah, that's right. That's the only person that property was up for sale. I mean, we, we, we have a lease that's still valid, so if it is sold, it would be. How long is the lease good for? Um, as long as the lease is good for 25 years, so. Um, How long have you been there? Okay. We've been there for more than 25 years, but there's. Oh! <laughs> no, but there are automatic extensions, so I'm. Um, on whose part? Um, it's kind of within the contracts with uh, Verizon and AT&T. Usually five-year renewals after the initial 25-year term expires. So right now we have an active, we're in an active renewal. Um, it, yeah, 10 years, I think we got every 10 years, every five years. They come back and we negotiate with us? For the special permits, the special if permits, needed. Yeah. At the last? Well, be, before the Jobs Act uh, changed the authority of the board. Through the chair. Please. At the last time around, um, we, uh, I know I asked for um, two things, the, the noise level of the equipment, if you have any outside equipment, and I couldn't find that here, and the um, uh, and, uh, screening of uh, varieties around the fence. Um, and I know that the, when I asked for the last, at the last time around, whoever it was, I'm not sure, it might have been Verizon, they didn't put the uh, varieties in it. Um, so, can we make sure that this this happens this time? W was it asked for, for um, Verizon or AT and T? Because they're they're the landlord on this site. They would have done. This it was it, site it wasn't the landlord because the landlord. Oh, whoever, our landlord, I should. Yeah, say. whoever it was said uh, they couldn't remove the horns because they they didn't belong to them. It must have been you guys. But. Mm -hmm. Could well, we, there's a bunch of different carriers up there. Richard. Could we make sure that we got um, arborvitaes around the fence line? You know, for screening? I, mean, I can I can speak with uh, my the AT and T rep that I'm working with to see if that was something that they discussed. Um, but I'm not sure if that was with Verizon or not. But I can I can definitely um, look into that. But with the new equipment that you're putting in, just could you make sure that you um, uh, uh, screen it with arborvitaes or some? Some, it's uh, it's inside lawn. an enclosure, fenced enclosure. Right. Yeah. Inside the enclosure or? Uh, uh, outside the fence. Outside. See, again, that's, I don't know if we can do that because we're, our lease space is inside the fence. Mm -hmm. Then inside the fence. But if you can do it outside the fence. The fence provides screening current. It's a fence. It's yeah. a chain link fence. No. I mean, but we, yeah. but it, yeah. the, uh, that's, that's AT&T's compound, so, uh, I don't think we have much pull on if we can screen it uh, or if that's something AT&T needs to. That's, that's, that's right. way up the top of that it's bloody thing behind a, behind a wall. And right, it's not in the neighbor. You've got to drive up to even look at the bloody thing, to be honest with you. You can't see it. I looked it at it the, the other day. Did you drive up? No. But I could see. What do you mean, no? I, how I, did you see it? Because I could see everything from the street. You can't see it from the street. You're going to drive up and around the corner, and there's a stone wall, and there's trees all along the side. You, mu you must be, you must be shack, you know, to be standing so tall that you can look up on that thing. What was the shack that I, the, uh, the thing gray that building that's up there? That I saw, yeah. That, that was the existing building. You had to drive up to see it. That's the existing building that has the elevator that takes you down five stories. That's been there since the 70s. Okay. Six. That's all been there. It, you're in a 40-acre parcel that, with no neighbors around. It's screening is kind of useless. And better off asking for some uh, better, uh, can you hear me now? With the, um, with the noise that, um, there's no generator at this site, so there is no generator noise. So it's just equipment cabinets inside inside that shelter, and you won't hear anything from okay. those. They're, they're silent. Then I'm okay with it. Huh? Shelter's got to go by the building inspector and all that stuff there. <coughs> Any issues with the normals? Mm -hmm. I see no issues. Anyone else? Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. do I'll entertain a motion that well, I'm going to make. <laughs> I'll, I'll entertain a motion that you'll That's make. Right. I'm not entertaining you anymore. Well, before we do, any comments from the public? Hearing none, I want to that motion. <laughs> I told you I was going to get it earlier, now I took it back. Okay. Get him to do it. You're up. I'll entertain the motion that we approve. Oh, no, no, no. he I'll wants to entertain it. it. You can make you it. I'll make the motion that we approve the okay. modification to the at and AT okay. for to take out the old dishes and put in a new state of the art. How's that? State of the art. Um, in accordance with the draft uh, decision? In, in, in accordance with the draft decision, new ground equipment. What do you want to call it? Well, 
It's growled upon. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. As, as described in the application. Enhanced, make, making it better. <laughs> yeah. I'll second that. All those in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Up, bills are going to go down now. Everybody asks me that. Unfortunately, I'm just their lawyer. I'm not their business people. Let's get your phone out of the way. Thank you for coming. Thank you again. Have a great night. Uh, who's next? We're flying now. Mm -hmm. See what happens when you have four people? Get four people. We can get some stuff done. Okay. So, 820, preliminary subdivision 93 Foster Street. If you can invite the applicants to please come forward. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. We're trying to block in the lights. They usually have it up on the screen. I'm not sure if it's. Well, we don't need to. We, we got we got the drawings. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, good evening. My name is Richard Harrington from Stamps McNary. We have Jeffrey Derrick, a traffic consultant, um, who submitted a report to your office, uh, to, your, to the board, following the last meeting. I'd like to turn it off to Jeffrey uh, to present his material on the distance from the intersection to the proposed road. And then we also have an open space plan, which you see in front of you, which the applicant said he provides to you. It was prepared today. Uh, so, big picture, we're not in a hurry to get through the plumbing plan process. So, the neighbors haven't seen it, and so what we'd like to do is if it's a, a, agreeable to the board at the end that this is a, a, a direction that you'd like us to go in, we can then talk to the neighbors, try to make it the best possible, do the soil testing, and possibly return about a month or so on a, just another preliminary conversation, just to update you as we move forward to, to definitive. But hopefully we can get to re resolution on a vote about is the intersection satisfactory, so we have that confidence as we look into the site with it, whether it's definitive or the open space. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to turn it over to Jeff. Where's the definitive? Well, it's on the screen now, so. Oh, okay. Well, the definitive is after we um, the report on them. We give, give them their approval. Go right ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Jeffrey Dirk. I'm a principal with Vanessa and Associates, and um, we were retained to look at um, sight lines at the access point in the property, and then um, also look at the zoning, the, the bylaw as it relates to separation between intersections. So um, you should have a letter in your packet that outlines those two areas that we had evaluated. Um, so just to kind of hit the, the high points, the first thing that we had to do is um, establish what the traffic volumes and the speed of traffic is on this roadway. Um, those two parameters establish kind of what's required for sight distances, um, as well as the separation between um, the intersection. So we went out and measured the speed of traffic over two days in December before we got all the snow. So um, prevailing travel speeds, weather conditions were generally good. So there's about 2,300 vehicles per day that travel along that section of road. Um, that's two-way traffic over the 24-hour period. Um, we measured the speed of the traffic, as I mentioned, over the two-day periods. So we're measuring the speed of somewhere close to about 6,000 vehicles over the two days. Um, the posted speed limit's 25 miles an hour. Um, the majority of the traffic was traveling um, somewhere closer to 34 miles an hour, so about 9 miles an hour over the posted speed limit. Um, that 34 mile an hour speed is um, the, critical dis uh, the critical measurement that we use in determining sight distances because we actually need to make sure that you have sight lines for uh, the speed at which traffic is actually traveling on the road, not the posted speed. So in looking at um, 34 mile an hour travel speed, you need to have a sight line of 240 feet. Um, that's the minimum distance you have to have uh, both approaching the intersection or if you're exiting the site looking to the left or right you need to see 240 feet to make sure that you can safely turn left or right coming out of the property um, That just yep. folks. Can I just have you remain quiet while we're listening to the presentation? Thank you 
the, the 240 foot distance is also uh, the distance that deals with the separation between intersections and I'll get to that in a, in a couple of minutes um, because it has to do again with the safe sight line that you need to have safely operate an intersection and so that also correlates to the minimum separation that you need between intersections for safety. So I'm looking at the sight distances at the access into the property. Uh, we need a minimum of 240 <coughs> feet of sight line. The minimum sight line measured uh, under existing conditions without any clearing of vegetation is in excess of 260 feet. So that means there's adequate sight lines for that intersection as it's presently designed to operate in a safe manner. Um, as you're look, exiting the site and you'd be looking to your left, so this would be towards Mill Road, um, the sight lines will actually improve with what they're showing in terms of the drainage structure that's going in there. There will be some vegetation clearing. As soon as that vegetation clearing uh, happens as a part of the construction of the project, the sight lines will exceed 500 feet. So you'll be able to actually see past the, um, uh, the Mill Road intersection, which is, which is a good thing. So that was kind of the first part of our assessment was to make sure the driveway could operate in a safe manner, and we've concluded that it can. And then the second part of it was to look at the zoning bylaw relating to intersection separations. So the zoning bylaw has two components as it relates to this project and its separation to other intersections. The first is that there's a minimum distance of 300 foot separation that's required for all new intersections. So um, in looking at the distance from this access point to Mill Road, uh, the zoning bylaw says it needs to be at least 300 feet. But given that we're on Foster Street, there's also another provision that says on Foster Street, which is characterized as a collector roadway, the separation increases to 400 feet. So we looked at both of those. Uh, the distance between the access to this property and Mill Road is uh, just over uh, 320, I think it's 323 feet exactly from center line to center line there. So it is above the 300 foot criteria, but it's just, it's below the 400 foot criteria. So we, what we looked at is that obviously requires um, an action on your part to, to grant a waiver or a variance from that position, provision of the bylaw. So what we've cited is some engineering standards uh, relating to the separation between intersections. And the Massachusetts Department of Transportation has a criteria as well. And in the back of my letter is the actual excerpt from the State Highway Design Manual. And so that shows as a diagram that shows the separation between intersections on the same side. So it has both offset intersections as well as intersections uh, on the same side. Um, and it's based on the speed, and the speed correlates into those site distance measurements that I had mentioned. So as you look at the table that's there, so we measured a speed of 34 miles an hour. And if you go through the chart from the design guidelines, what you see is for uh, intersections on the same side of the street, essentially. Uh, that for a design speed of between 15 and 30 miles an hour, the required separation is 200 feet. And then if you go up to between 35 and 40 miles an hour, the separation is 250 feet. So given the fact that we've got a separation of over 300 feet, as I mentioned, 323, it would certainly exceed the state criteria for separation between intersections. So again, we offered that as um, evidence to show that the intersections can operate in a safe manner, and if you're um, so inclined to grant whatever relief is necessary for um, being below the 400-foot separation, uh, the State Highway Department Design Manual allows you to, will give you some basis for a decision to grant the re <coughs> request for relief. So be happy to answer any questions that you have. Please, just give me one moment. Don't worry about it. Got a lot of numbers, so I think certainly. Mark, a quick question to you, and I think it was discussed at the last select meeting. Aren't they talking about a uh, speed limit change in enforcement in town on a lot of major roads and Foster being one of them? Um, they are for a lot of town, excuse me, for a lot of uh, town roadways, yes. To 20 or 25 something like that? The speed limit on Foster is 25 um, right now. Right. I don't think that would be changed under the... Under the speeds that they're looking at. Okay, I was just curious if you had information on that. 25 is actually the minimum legal speed limit you can post. You can't post below. You can post warnings to drop the speed below that, but 25 miles an hour is kind of the minimum, the minimum. speed that you okay. can post. Is that maybe right? more enforcement is required. I did, know. Know. Thank you. I did not know that. Yes, so it is. we're looking at 75 feet, uh, 77 feet exactly for the relief from our bylaw, but he is. The proposals, the proponent is well under the state requirement. Yeah. Um, any comments from you on that? He's room? well under or well over it? He's well, he meets, he, he, he exceeds the requirement 
regarding the state, he's over by our bylaw by 77 feet. Yeah. Ours is more stringent. Correct. That's right. Um, looking for any comments from my members? There's a there's a hill there. I know you talked about sight lines. Correct. Right. Um, and I believe it's if you're coming up from from Taylor Street side is is uh, is where this this would have the hottest time mm -hmm. visualizing uh, so somebody right. entrance that's right coming in and going out. I, um, and I think that's where it was down to about two hundred six, just over two hundred sixty feet. Was. That's so looking right. We're talking about correct. Yes, and the street's pretty narrow in that area, isn't it? Um, it is. Yes. The the um, complete. I'm gonna. I apologize for interrupting. The complete streets plan um, would include uh, bicycle lane or sidewalk. Um, when uh, Foster Street is reconstructed, that application is going to the state to get added to the to the tip plan. So there is, um, there are sketches, sketch plans for improvements to Foster okay, Street. Okay, so that's going to be widened. Well, yeah. at some point, it would, would be addressed. Um, or maybe as, made narrower. If they're adding a bike lane. Yeah. But the, at the 25 mile an hour speed limit, that would stay the same. Um, the traffic levels, it's, a lot of it serves the uh, commuter rail station. Right. Yeah. Um, one, Here. one quarter of the population of Littleton drives on Foster Street every day. I bet. Well, I mean, just that's the numbers. That's the numbers. Numbers. That's right. Huh? Oh. The numbers he just gave you, right? That's right. It's a lot of. It's a lot of. A lot of movement. Um. And look into the. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Richie. I no, no, no. So I was going to ask him because uh, the. Uh, all the all the numbers you gave us Correct. didn't uh, have any uh, component for the width of the street factored into that. Uh, the width is actually the physical measurement. So what we actually do is it it accounts for the width of the street because we're measuring it from the actual standpoint of where the vehicle would be within the roadway itself. But I mean, in in terms of a standard uh, width street, isn't this street a little narrower than a standard street? Um, we'll get to you, man. I don't know that it's I don't know that it's narrower than a standard width street. No, because I mean if you're for the for the, for the functional classification of the road, it, you know, if we're talking about something that's somewhere between twenty, if it's twenty two feet oh. wide, twenty four is ideal. We yeah. tend to depending on the volume of traffic. This looked like it was a much less than twenty four. It's probably closer to twenty two, I would say, but it's probably not. You know, there could be sections if it's not if it's a variable width, you might get yeah. down to twenty, but certainly nothing less than that. But but twenty feet is sufficient for two way travel. In fact, the trend now is to add the bike lanes and things that were mentioned. Yeah to pinch the road down because what we want to see is if it's posted 25, we would like to see the speeds down to somewhere within a five mile an hour pace is what we want to see. So as a traffic engineer, how do you account for the narrower the narrowing of the street? Because that, that obviously has some effect on, on the, on the uh, vehicle passing each other. And, 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 you know, if it was an ideal situation on a 24 foot wide street, you would have these you know, your minimums from the state and from the our bylaw would apply. But, but is there a is there a factor that you deduct for the narrowness of the street? The narrowness affects the speed of traffic on the roadway. So generally, if you have a narrower road, the speeds tend to go down a little bit. Is what will happen in some instances. Um, there's nothing about we we would take into account a situation if in fact it was so narrow that it was like a single travel lane we might might but it, it doesn't affect the sight lines the sight lines are purely a function of the speed no, because I understand that yeah. but when you the the sight lines are also based on a, a normal size road at 24 they are not right. no it's purely be, if this was a one way road it would be based on the speed it it really has no function in terms of the width the only thing the width does is it has to do with where the position of the vehicle and the position of the driver is on the roadway because what we're measuring for sight lines is really the, a point of conflict so if the road is narrower it just basically moves the vehicles closer in terms of where they may be within the roadway itself let me, let me get to what I'm, yep. I'm trying to the roads narrow right now it's got a it's got a hill component to it correct it's got um, you, you throw a winter, uh, you know, a heavy snow load, yep. load of winter, and, and you're now gone from, a, say, a 20-foot a wide road mm -hmm. to an 18-foot wide road. Um, that's a 
that's that's not an ideal entry and exit for that many cars on that narrow a road at that speed. No, so what ends up happening, so this comes up all the time about winter conditions. What ends up happening is if you're blowing through here on an 18-foot road with ice and snow on the road at 34 miles an hour, you're driving off the edge of the road into the woods. So what ends up happening is under the wintertime conditions, when the road gets narrower, your speeds actually go down. So if we would have, that's why we don't measure speeds when it's inclement weather with snow banks and everything. What we do is we take our measurements under favorable weather conditions so that from the standpoint of the driver, there's really no impediment to the speed or their positioning within the roadway that's affected by conditions. So you basically drive the way you normally would drive in the roadway. If you start trying to design for adverse weather conditions, you would end up with a design that wouldn't meet the requirements under a nice sunny summer day when people might be driving faster. So what I'd say is that we're designing for a condition that's well above an average condition, meaning that we're accounting for higher volume and higher speeds. When we're looking at sight distances, it's really a function of the speed of the traffic on the roadway. And the way the measurements are done is we assume that the motorist who's, from the standpoint of along the roadway itself, and this does get to the narrowness, it's from the standpoint of the driver driving along Foster Street and they need to see a two foot object. So if there was a rock or you know, under day or under nighttime conditions, it'd be the tail light of a vehicle. So you need to be sure that on, as you're driving along the road, at any point along Foster Street, you can see a two foot object. That's one sight line we measure. The other sight line is the sight line for someone who's exiting the project. That sight line, and it is affected by the width of the roadway because the way the measurement is taken is it assumes that that driver is sitting at a point 14 and a half feet back into the road. So if we took the edge of Foster Street, go back 14 and a half feet, and put a point, that's where we assume the driver is sitting. So in some ways, the width of the roadway affects how those measurements are performed. But when we go out and do it, it's based on the actual conditions that are out there. So narrowness of the road as it affects position of vehicles along the roadway <coughs> and where the driver may be positioned in the site, it's all taken into account when we're doing the measurements. It's not theoretical. It's actually done in the field. Okay. You've done a wonderful job of, of doing a, a classroom textbook explanation of why the site distances it's work. It's done in the field. But it, We measured in the field. You've, you've done a wonderful job. But I just think the road is too narrow. The speeds are too fast. And and this and the sight lines are, are too. Um, it's just it's all going to happen too quick uh, for that entry right there. Is there some some other way that you can put an entry into that plate into that area, or is there some way that you can modify that entry? The site engineer can address that. What I can tell you is that as a professional engineer who evaluated this site based on the existing conditions okay. and the speed of traffic, all all I can okay. tell you is that as a professional, it meets all of the requirements. I, I'm not to, a professional, right. but I know. I've, I'm just, I've been in construction long enough in my I, whole life uh, yeah. that professional this or professional that doesn't always I've been equal doing the, what's yeah, in the field. I've been doing this over over 25 years, okay, in, in all of the New England states, and I will tell you that this meets all of the, and I, I'm, not, sure, not, I'm sure. not, not theoretical, I have projects built throughout New England I, I'm sure it, I'm that sure, function I'm, in a I'm safe manner. Does. We, have a, we have a subdivision okay. right on the same road. Yeah. Sight distance and everything. How does this compare to the subdivision that's up in Turkey? I would have to go measure it. I couldn't tell Could you. Could you do that for us and tell yeah. us how the sight distance is? With, with the, with the road it's the too. same road, Richard. It's going to be the same width. It's a narrow, mm. it's a narrow road. Yeah, it's further down. It's already been done. Show us how the sight distance here equates to what's been done over there. Yeah, I'll it, do. Gives I, us a better idea yeah. of what, and what, did, like. what was the name? Yeah, well, I, I still... Dur it's Turkey. It's right down the right and left. It's just First further right down on the road. Okay. The same road, it's Foster Street, same road. They've got 27 houses going in there. When we looked at it, we had trees, we had stone walls and everything else. I, I didn't hear one peep it's, about sight distance back then. Let's it's, see how that sight distance compares to this. We one. had plenty of conversation you know, about sight distance. You know, guys, we never had a, you know, guys before I was interrupted, I, was, I had not finished my, uh, my discussion with the ahead, gentleman Richard. here. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I think that it's, this is, you know, this has to be taken on its own merits, mm. not, not the merits of the one down the street, yeah, I, as far I as I'm just, concerned. I don't disagree. And uh, no matter what you can show me on paper or, or uh, textbook, I, I still think that this is too narrow a stretch, or, too narrow a piece of road on Foster Street 
for that type of entry. And you, you're too close to uh, Mill Road, and you've got the, the hill on one side. I, I think the entry needs to be, uh, or maybe Foster Street needs to be widened. I think the entry needs to, and, and I, trust me, I, I, know, I know this industry, and I think that um, it's my gut feeling that this, you know, whatever paper s says will work here, won't work here. I don't want to tell you. All I can do is put my professional engineer stamp yes. on it and submit it to yes. you. That's all. That's all I can do and submit my resume. It's, That's it's all nothing, I can do. For it's nothing you. against your your professionalism. It's it's my gut. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Peter, any comments? No, yeah. well, not present. <laughs> awesome. I just want to see how it stacks up to the one that we approved ten months ago down on Foster Street. <coughs> give it. It'll give us a better idea of what we're looking at. Um, I'll take comments from the Mr. Herring. Do you mind if I take comments first? Absolutely, you? Go right ahead. Okay, sure. Uh, comments from the audience, please. State your name for the record and your address. Yes, um, Beth Leahy, um, and I own Foster Street, 105 Foster Street. And the road literally goes right up my driveway along one side of it. And I will tell you, there is no clear sight line. Pulling out of my driveway, I hold my breath and go. And it's right on that road. So there's no way you come out of that road with a clean sight line. I know it. I've lived there my entire life. The other question I would have is that's a hill. In rain or melting snow, that'll just channel that water across the street and into the properties who are also lower than that road. So the worry would be also the channeling of the water. But the sight line, there's no way that's a clear sight line. <coughs> This, where that map ends at the bottom is where the road turns. And if you could see just a little bit longer, you'd see the road turns there. And you can't see at all. So that's what I just wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I'd say we'll work across the circle. Uh, Warren Terrell, 14 Mill Lane. Uh, my concern is the... Uh, on this, this new plan, I think those green squares represent the uh, proposed leaching systems? Yes. Thank you. Uh, particularly in the vicinity of house number four, five, and six, uh, the slope uh, on that hill right there is uh, a little over 16 percent. Uh, I think what that will mean is some type of a uh, in the slope type of uh, leaching system which on the northern side of the leaching system will take a lot of fill. Uh, I'm mostly concerned about the positioning of leaching systems uh, on a steep slope 14 to 17 percent and in back of house number four the slope uh, exceeds 16 percent, so that's going to be uh, somewhat problematic. Uh, the, I do not know if the proposed fill for the leaching systems gets into the buffer zone or not. I just, uh, pretty uh, difficult reading some of these topo lines, but uh, uh, I raise that concern as the, the case of the, uh, the filling, particularly for the, uh, uh, the leaching systems. Uh, I would expect that house numbers four, five, six, and seven would probably be set with a foundation similar to the elevation of the cul-de-sac. And if that is the case, uh, significant fill will be required uh, for those foundations as well. So. Uh, just be cognizant that there's going to be an awful lot of land clearing there and there's going to be a lot of fill, particularly going towards the uh, stream. Thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Who is next in line? Please. Bill Telford, 79 Foster. I have a question for Jeffrey. What were the dates that uh, you did the traffic survey on? December 19th and 20th, which is a Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Well, that was pretty close to the holiday, um, so the traffic is probably a lot less than it normally is. And speeds would be up too. Uh, if you want to see the speeds, you can try to back out of my driveway. Um, that's 
the average speed is not 35 miles an hour. You know, it's really, I have to pull in my driveway because I can't back out of it. The people are going so fast, especially when the train gets out. It's just, it's ridiculous. Well, then we can probably have a, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, are you finished? Yeah. All right, thank you for your, uh, next, please. Christopher Mountain, 104 Foster Street. Um, I have concerns, as Mr. Crowley has, about the distance from Mill Road to the proposed access road. And living across from 105 Foster Street, I am in agreement that the sight lines coming from the uh, train station side approaching that proposed road are not good. Um, the property at 105 also has, there's a garage and some built up, um, a built up hill over there which is a, right next to the proposed road and that's going to cut down on that sight line too. It's a, at that curve which was stated before you can't see in that drawing, the approach is definitely dicey and I back out of there or pull out of there every day. Um, so I just wanted to state my concerns on the location of that road. My concern, as I stated in the last meeting also, was the water and the path that the water would take and the, just what the plan would be for redirecting the water that's going to come off of the septic systems and the land uh, due to rain, snow, or natural causes. Okay. Thank you. We'll move across to this side. Oh, one more on this side. Please. Um, Chetna Varade. Uh, me and my husband, we are uh, 166 Mill Road. Uh, we both commute into Boston, so we are commuters. And as uh, Mr. Crowley mentioned, um, highly concerned about the uh, approach road from 320 Mill Road South. Uh, today I walked from the train station to, the, to, my, uh, to my house, and uh, I, was, uh, I slipped over ice, and three times at least I was approached by a driving vehicle, and I only see this getting worse. Uh, my husband unfortunately couldn't come because he's feeling sick. But uh, we definitely uh, have concerns about this new construction. New construction. Okay. Thank and, you. And uh, we also have, I also have the same concerns about water running down. We have a sle steep uh, driveway on 166 Mill Road. Uh, highly concerned about the water running down. Uh, most, uh, we, we have wetlands as well. So uh, over the you know, last five years, we've seen big <coughs> and the stream, the stream has dried down. The birds have moved. So we are also concerned about the beauty. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we'll start in the back, please. Uh, Carol Mueller, East Roxbury Drive. On the sight lines, you were talking about looking back toward Mill Road, some um, some of the vegetation there. Does that include the tall trees on top of the stone wall? Would any of those, I mean, this is a scenic road. I wondered if any of those would have to come down. Is that what you're talking about? Um, this, we don't. So to meet the minimum sight lines, we don't need to do any vegetation clearing. The <coughs> site engineer can talk more about what would need to be done to construct any of the drainage features um, in that corner. I'm not, I'm not sure what's coming down there. Good question. Uh, next, anybody? Yes. Mr. Scott, please. Well, I guess the, obviously the concerns of the neighbors that live there and, and whether it... Uh, I suggest we probably get an independent person uh, to um, company to, to assess the speeds yeah. and the numbers and over more varied dates yeah. as opposed to just before Christmas as, as one uh, resident has said. Um, if the speed is, is is drastically higher than that, then a few things need to need to occur. So the sight lines will, will be thrown off drastically more, the numbers and and disruption of, of, of people of <coughs> my my other feeling is is is, is that these people own that land and, and here's my you all everyone's I'm living in a house in Littleton and you're living in a house in Littleton and we bought our properties and and these people have owned that property for years and do they have the right to do these things they do and but it's our job to make sure that they don't adversely affect the neighbors and such so I think if we can work something out but again, if you, you know, it's like Richard said, I don't think you're lying to me, but I want to make sure that you know, I'm not hearing the numbers wrong. No, absolutely. So I think if you're willing to 
foot the bill to it for an independent study for the for the traffic and such as this. I, mean, I don't think see how the town should have to pay for it. But well, we could ask a third party and have the developer. I, I think that would maybe alleviate some of the, the, the residents' concerns. It would help relieve mine. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. You don't matter today. <laughs> All right, now you do. <laughs> I don't want to. Speak to you. So. I think that was something, and the sight lines, and if the speed is actually what it is, then the sight lines is going to be a different, a whole other issue. That's a lot of cars coming out of one place and a lot of people looking in one direction. That's my okay. opinion. Excellent. Mr. Harrington, please, uh, I think you can answer some Thank of you. I think I remembered all the questions. So uh, I agree with the concerns. I know that from the last meeting, you had a concern about traffic, so we hired a consultant. Um, he got it done before Christmas, so we're able to see some information now. Uh, as we move forward, certainly our client who couldn't be here, or Brian's here, but Bruce Wheeler who was here last meeting, uh, I've worked with other subdivisions still. We've hired, we've had the third party traffic consultant come in also, so I don't see that as being a problem as we move forward. Um, I was out there before Jeff was involved. There is a tighter sight distance towards that direction from his, in front of Ms. Lay's house, which is, still meets the criteria that he's presented so far. Um, we have better distance towards Mill Road, like we talked about, uh, but we're still not willing to probably grant that waiver tonight, I imagine, with the talk about the traffic. Um, in regards to the septic systems and the slopes, this topography is just from your town GIS maps. It's, it's, it's an approximation at this time, so we were doing on the ground field survey. I did walk back there. I do know about the slope you're talking about. Those septic systems will be above the slope. They won't be on the side of that. So. What this plan represents is an open space development where the regular development is over here on the board and it shows that we need 40,000 square foot lots for this area of town and that means a longer road. So the open space development that you see pulls the cul-de-sac ball back into the middle of the site away from that slope. We're able to take lot 8 which is closer to the homes at Mill Road and bring it more into the center of the site. Uh, what we did was basically have average spacing and show the arc going around from numbers two to eight to try to get them into the site and give a perimeter open space uh, with an emphasis of more towards Mill Road because the two homes that are closest to that side and the neighbors were present at the last meeting. Uh, we'll look at lot one also, which is closest to the Leahy home. Uh, but at, once you get to lots two and three, a lot of that land does slope down into a bowl. That's why we have a basin behind number three. So the topography is a good general manner for tonight's discussion, but we would have it all defined and, and have a better conversation on drainage at the definitive level, um, which we always do. And as you know, we can't flood a neighbor, we can't increase the rate of the volume, so we would make sure in every direction, as we always do, we provide those calculations and you, you would have a third party review also, um, and we're certainly welcome to that always. Um, other aspects, I think, um, Traffic we talked about. Um, am I missing anything? Drainage from the road out to the drainage from the road. Uh, that's that's the first concern I had. You, know, you pull up the site. It, it is a loop driveway. Water always flows downhill. Uh, there's a, a concern we learned from the neighbor a couple doors down on the opposite side that Foster Street itself does sheet flow onto their lawn and wash out some vegetation and cause some scour. So uh, right now there's water coming off. We're allowed to have water come off tomorrow. What I have is we have a basin showing behind the existing home on lot A to catch the runoff from our road to slow it down and contain on the site. And then we show a basin between the, the our driveway and the road. There are nice mature trees there. There's a little bit of an opening of grass between the trees and the upper driveway. My hope is that we can do a longer, narrow type of swale to direct more runoff there as opposed to it sheep flowing onto the road. So. That is one of our biggest challenges with drainage. Uh, it is because it does climb up rather quick. And there's no, it doesn't appear to be any street drainage to tie into because uh, it just all keeps going downhill. So um, towards Mill Road, those two homes, with moving it away and keeping more vegetation in the open space, that would alleviate that concern a little bit more. And then we wouldn't look to touch the slope on the back northern side where the wetlands are on the other side of the stone wall. Uh, so it is, it is a, a, a little bit of a puzzle, if you will, how septic hold 50 feet to the basin. So we would work that whole, uh, that system and work to keep the buffer around the outside doing vegetation in the open space. Uh, so 
This plan represents the same house size that you see in the other plan, roughly 60 foot long by 40 foot deep, because the homes are a little bit deeper now these days. Um, it would be two car garage. 40? Yes. Is the foundation size? That, that's the rough house box on the plan. You know, that could vary. Uh, that was a starting point that we showed uh, based on um, the, the way these lots are somewhat longer and narrower uh, with the shape of the land. They could be larger coming back in, but that was a starting point uh, to get things rolling. So we've done two days of artificial soil testing up there uh, with, the, with the machine. Uh, we just submitted for the show board to come out and do official testing. So uh, it is a sandy loam. Uh, there are a couple places where there's ledge within two or three feet, which is uh, not a surprise on this slide of a parcel. So uh, what we do know is we have a confidence that we would be able to likely provide a septic system on every lot that we show. Uh, but we have to confirm it, just like the drainage. So, uh, but we have done our diligence to provide more information to the public since the last meeting. Uh, and then we, if this is the way to go or the preferred, minus the entrance, the entrance is the same when I have the plan. Uh, we have to work through those, those hoops. Uh, but is there a desire for the board to have us proceed on the open space plan or to stick with the convention? That's kind of the uh, part of the conversation tonight. Mm -hmm. Could I see that? Con sure. We don't have the convention on that package, do we? Oh, if it is, then. I'll turn it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do have it. Um, you can see. Yeah. So just to kind of show the summary, lot one, for the most part, the house is in general same location. Yeah. Two has been pulled back to here. Three and four have been moved over. Yeah. Then basically we took eight and seven and moved it over with some concern. So if the neighbors had a concern last week with the septic system being close to the lot line. Okay. So we've moved that away. Um, and then the cul-de-sac is longer because your frontage requirements are longer, uh, are more. Yeah. For, at 150, yeah, and then there's no requirement for frontage, minimum frontage, or lot area uh, on the open, as you know. So yeah. it, it does suit this site very well for some of the concerns. Yeah, it's a much better. I, I like, it. but um, could I to the chair, please? Okay. Um, the uh, the open space, I think, is is a good I good good compromise. It it gives the uh, the abutters the additional buffer. Um, one thing we we like to achieve when we have open space like this is walking paths. Okay. Um, and in this case, it's it's not a, an easy. Uh, you'd, where would you go? You'd, unless you circumnavigate the whole uh, parcel, I think that would be the only only way you could do a walking path. But that would that would be very nice if you could. Uh, one of the aspects I want to talk about talk with the board about is uh, with with the. Um, your standard circle. It doesn't um, fit as nicely with the cluster. So what I'd like to try to do is see if we could stretch it out to more like a needle type of loop so that you have more of a, a more of a, you could have like an indoor, like they could ride their bikes more in, yeah. in, in more of a, a circular loop, like a track, if you will. And it would stretch out the frontages along that as opposed to having longer driveways. So it would probably save on pavement yeah. too because the homes could be right along the road. Well, well Peter, I think, brought up the fact that we, uh, don't want to see this type of circle anymore. If it's a circle, it needs to have some sort of a um, uh, drivable. Or it, was that was that you, Pete? <laughs> it um, uh, either a, a, a drivable or um, uh, you know, like pavers. Some some pervious pavers along the pervious pavers, yeah. I think he's saying in the middle. In the middle. <coughs> in the middle. Oh, in the middle. For yeah. The, for a turning radius, in because case emergency vehicles. Need nobody to mows that. Nobody. Okay. Nobody maintains that. So, if this is the, with the open space way, and I can turn it around after. So, if we were able to do something like this, for instance, and come over and stretch this out and be more something like this. Yeah. So that you have um, a situation where it's still the turning radius is a good for fire. We have we can show those templates. And what it does, it basically just gives you shorter driveways. If if you did that, I think it would be good because the second that thought, that concept will fall a little bit closer to the my next comment, which is um, we try to get wildlife corridors through through our developments too, so we're not creating dams. Um, this doesn't have any wildlife corridors. Um, having a uh, a large enough um, shaped uh, island in the middle. Um, Gives the gives wild we'll give this is I go to the planning seminars and this is what the new concept is to have wildlife corridors and some place of refuge as they're crossing like the center 
Okay. Um, uh, so what this would do is also for the neighborhood, for if people do walk in here they, and they wanted to come into the develop, they could have a, lo a larger walking loop as opposed yeah. to a smaller circle. Uh, what else do is you could have, you know, they could, you could ride bikes and things of that nature, roll the blade around and be up instead of being down on the, yeah. the, the steeper. So uh, we have a lot of experience with the clusters and shaping things and trying to make adjustments. So if I do have some flexibility on the road layout in the middle, then I, we could improve on that also. That would be um, great. As far as the board, you know. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the corridor may be in this direction because of the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, so by keeping it, and we wouldn't be hindering the slope there. And... Uh, we can look at that also and, and see if it's um, if there's a movement of one side or the other to a, a heavier buffer. You know, that's something we could also look at. Okay. Could put signs up. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> deer yeah. crossing. Deer, deer can't cross here. Deer. Can't. <laughs> I can tell you. you know, <laughs> we had a family of fox. They have an acre lot. Um, they laid out in the front lawn while the pizza delivery guy came in, and they didn't. They, they jumped over the stone wall, went down the street, and crossed the street like a typical person to go on their way. So it's mm -hmm. kind of entertaining. But I do know on my side, <coughs> yeah. house, they do travel down there, so I know what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. The, uh, see, that fox in the front yard is, is, is not where the fox should be. The mm -hmm. fox should be in a little narrow wildlife corridor of his own. Right. But they, they do... Um, he anywhere he wants. He's yeah. wild. He doesn't obey rules. <coughs> he, he's, he's supposed to... Well, then, well, maybe he doesn't want to go in the corridor. He's supposed <laughs> to give him a sign. And, and yeah, yeah, all right. Well, I don't want him to cross here. I want him to cross further down where and I can see further. Then you move I the sign. Him. Um, so I move the side. All right, so, so I think what we've heard tonight, and I appreciate everybody coming out, I really do, and I appreciate all the comments, the letters we receive, several of them. Um, I want to thank the traffic study engineer for coming in and providing the yeah. information. Thank you. Um, so I think we'll be looking for a third-party consultant to review your work, do their own independent study. Um, I think that they should do it apples for apples, so maybe we get them to do a four-day study and you said you did two days right and they could take two the two worst days of their four days to compare the Absolutely. if that would be satisfactory that they did for we got the third party to do a four-day study take the two worst <coughs> days so they can that way they have the same yeah. map to work with yeah yeah we got it we got to capture a plan. you need a plan with a, that shows the um, curve in it the whole roadway from we from taylor that. street okay yeah, from mm -hmm. taylor street and it's got to capture the heaviest load Right. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll we'll do that, and we'll we'll get a bigger drawing that'll show the the tight corner that we've heard about tonight. And I'm yeah. aware of it. I drive the road often. Sure. Nice. Um, so yeah, the impression to have this before you know continue the preliminary process and have yeah. this third party involved and yep. and come back. Yeah. So I think that'll be the. So I'd entertain a motion to, to continue this and and get the third party consultant involved, and you guys will come back tomorrow. When do we have the next opening? Day? Um, well, the next meeting is in three weeks. Um, I'm not sure there's time, sufficient time to do a traffic study turnaround by then. Um, but the follow, and then the following, so that's February 1st. The following meeting is March 1st. It's not a public hearing, um, but we need to let the neighbors know what, what date well, to expect. Do it now, though. Pick the date now. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. You can do that. Yeah. We can stay. Get on the agenda for three weeks from now. If, it is, if we can't do it because of the consultant, then we can just, just talk to Marin and, and, and move you out. And we have the, the emails for the neighbors too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I think that's I think that's more than fair. Um, but folks, pay attention so you know that if they're on the agenda for February one, if they can't get this traffic study done, please make sure you come and attend the March first meeting. Okay. Well, we're going to be contacting the person, the people who do the study, correct? Not them. So the town would is a town list. No. Are we picking the? Uh, yeah. The third party, so they're paying for it. We're picking it. Yeah. So we pick. Who would you reach out to Green to find? Uh, reach out to Green yeah. International, and um, if they they always update me with their schedule. If they're not available, then um, I'm sure we can come to an agreement on somebody to use, somebody else to use. But certainly, whoever the board, you know, whoever the board prefers. Yeah. I get your names if you want. There's a company out in California, like we can fly a few of them out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. All right, so I'll uh, entertain a motion to continue the public hearing, We're getting uh, third party results for a traffic study, and uh, looking for a larger plan. So move. Second. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Aye. 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 Yes. So, just, just, <coughs> bless you. Richard, before you get up, I want to see if I can get a motion to close the public, close and adjourn.
Yeah, we've already adjourned. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah, let's go. So moved. Second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. You should make it to the point. <coughs> what the hell are you doing? You guys killed me.